Welcome to part five. In this video, we are going to create bullets and we're gonna give our player the ability to shoot said bullets, preferably at enemies. And we're gonna make it to where the enemies will respond to being shot. Let's go ahead and do that. So first thing we wanna do is create a sprite and we're gonna name this SPR under slash bullet. Um, doesn't matter how big the sprite is, what matters is the content in the sprite. So I'm just gonna use a brush and I'm just gonna make it like an orange and we're just gonna put it a little bit darker. We're just gonna put it as close to the center as you can. That is important. Um, that's close, pretty close. And of course, make sure this is checked, this box here, to middle center. So we have our bullet created, the sprite at least. Now we're gonna create a new object and we are gonna name this obj under slash bullet. Of course, we're gonna assign the appropriate sprite that we created. And there we have it, we have an object for our bullets. Now, we're gonna give the player the ability to shoot those bullets. Well, let's break it down. So we wanna shoot bullets. Well, we're gonna to have to create an object bullet in the game world. We're gonna to have to give that bullet motion so that it actually will go in the proper direction. And then we're gonna to have to make it to where when an enemy uh, touches a bullet, he loses health. So of course we're gonna to have to create a I'll delete that here. Uh, we're gonna have to create a health system for our enemy as well, which we already know how to do that. So let's go to our object player. So, so far we've just created an object called obj under slash bullet. And now we gotta make a shoot mechanic. So click add event and go to mouse. Now you have a ton of options here and I might explain this in the last video, but um, the first set of options all has to do with clicking an object. Left down, left press, left release. This all has to do with like clicking on the player, right clicking, left clicking, etc. But global, you can see way down here, has to do with clicking anywhere in the game world. So for buttons, you would use something like left pressed. When I left press my mouse button, I click a button. Uh, global would be appropriate for guns. So specifically, we want an automatic gun. So we have three options here. Uh, we have left or right down, left or right pressed or middle. Uh, and then release, down, pressed, released. Pressed means I click left mouse button one time, I'm gonna run a script once. Le uh, released means I click the mouse button one, th or, or I'm sorry, I release that mouse button and it's gonna run a script one time. Down means I'm holding the mouse button down and it's gonna be running a script repeatedly. We're making an automatic gun, we want it to be left down, all right. Now you get this annoying green text every time and yeah, you know, this is useful because you can see all these have say insert description here and we haven't been doing that <laughs> But you can just change it and say shooting gun and You can get rid of this if you don't want it and this will update over here. There it goes shooting gun now We are an object player. We have global left down and we want to create our bullet So let's do this one thing at a time to cr put an object in the game world. You're gonna be using the script instance create depth okay there's another one called instance create layer and we'll get to that in another video instance create depth just use that for now you're going to want to assign the x and y position so where do you want to create this bullet well we want to create it at our player so you just use x and y uh something i didn't cover in the last video but anytime you see green text that's telling you that that is a variable that's built into an object. GameMaker and GML has a lot of variables that are already uh, set up to go in your object that you don't have to create. X and Y are two variables already created for you, and it will always contain the X and the Y of your player. So in other words, the coordinates of where your player is on the map. Uh, so that's really good to know. And there are other things like that, variables built in, that are the green text. So uh, just put X and Y, that will create the bullet in the center of your player. Next, you wanna put the depth of where you wanna create this. So if we just write depth, you can see it's another green uh, variable there. Um, and of course you can change this. So depth is just the depth of your player. Think layers in a Photoshop program or something. Um, this is, you, you can put the object above or below your player. If you say depth minus one, you're going to create the bullet and it's going to be above the player. So there's that. If you say plus one, it's gonna be hidden and underneath the player, okay? So it's all, do you want this bullet to be on top or below? You know, when, when we're talking about the graphics here in the game world. Depth plus one. We, we don't want it to spawn out of his belly button, so. 
uh, and then just the object you want to create. OBJ under slash bullet and end it like that and you're good to go. This piece of code you're going to use a lot. Um, and that's it. Now, I'll just explain this real quick. Uh, an instance is, uh, is you know, we, we don't, we don't uh, oh boy, I'm going to be very eloquent in explaining this, I'm sure. But, uh, you know, objects are just uh, what we call the assets and, you know, it contains everything we're coding here. But an instance uh, it, it is essentially a clone of an object. So if we go into our level, um, you're not seeing an object enemy, you're seeing an instance of that object. The object is the actual asset, and instance is like, it's like a clone of that object. It takes everything in that object you created, and boop, it clones it. So like, when, when we take our enemy and we, we have three of them, we have three instances of an object called obg under j under slash enemy. Does that make sense? And, and each of these contain their own clones of those variables, their own health systems. They're independent in certain ways. So in, this is an instance. These are instances of objects. Um, this is an instance of object player. It's just clones of an object. Okay, so I'll just leave these guys in here because eventually that'll be useful to have. All right, now if we run our game with that code instance create depth, when we left click, we did just create a bullet. If we move, there it is. If we hold the left mouse button, we're creating a ton of bullets. It kind of looks cool, actually. Of course, the enemies aren't responding to it. I mean, that could be a cool game right here. Do something with this. Okay, so that's no good. But at least they're showing up in the game, but we want them to actually shoot. So we want to give the bullet motion. So we go to our object bullet, and we just say uh, create. And we're going to give this bull bullet uh, speed. Now, again, here's another green variable. Starting out, your player's speed is always going to be equal to zero. You don't have to create this variable. It's created for you. It's always going to be zero starting out. You can modify the speed of your bullet. If we just say speed equals five, for example, and we run the game. If we create a bullet, it's, it's always going to go in the speed of five, but then you need to give the bullet direction. So notice it's not shooting towards the mouse. You have to give it a direction too. So here's another green uh, thing here, direction and you could give it all the way up to 365 degrees. So if we say 80, for example, um, it's gonna go that way. <laughs> you know, so with code, we can change the direction, we can change the speed of different objects. Uh, thankfully, GameMaker gives us a really useful function uh, just called move towards point, okay? And that will set the speed and that will set the direction at the same time. Uh, we can just say move towards point, and then of course we want to give it our x, like the x and y of where we want it to move towards, and then the speed. So we want it to move towards the mouse, right? I mean, we could move it towards an enemy, but then it would just be auto-aim. Wherever our mouse is, that's where we want the bullet to go. So here's some more green variables <laughs> built in, uh, is mouse under slash x, mouse under slash y. Uh, this will always contain the X and the Y position of wherever your mouse cursor is. Very useful. So, uh, and then we're going to set a speed, and we'll just give it the speed of 8. A little faster than what we had it just a moment ago. So you just put that in the create event of your object bullet, and now, there it goes. It's going in the direction of our mouse. And if we hold it down, it's just going everywhere. Again, it looks really cool, and in the next video, we'll actually make it to where you're not shooting a million bullets per second. It still looks super cool though. That could be like an effect that you have, you know, in a boss or something. Last thing we'll do is we will go to our object enemy and we will add an event and we will add a collision event objects and we'll add a collision event with object bullet. And of course, when it collides with a bullet, collision means it's touching another object. Um, if it collides with the bullet, we'll just say instance destroy. Right? And then when we run it, if it runs into a bullet, it's going to destroy the enemy. And the bullet just keeps right on going. So what you could do with that is in your object bullet, you could add an event called uh, collision objects with the enemy. And you can make it to where it destroys itself too. So the bullet will disappear and the enemy will disappear. And if we run the game, 
Now, it's hard to get one bullet because it's going so fast. I don't think I can. I can do two, but you can kind of see how that works. All right, that's all I got for you this video. In the next video, we're going to expand on this, slow those bullets down, give the enemy hit points, and all that good stuff. Thank you for watching.